Hello, this is Annette with Project Refine Life. I am here with a VR today, and the tag is Tarot to the Extremes by Merlin A. Teresa. She created seven prompts, and in these seven prompts, you are comparing or showing or sharing <laughs> your extremes, the polar opposites for each prompt. So let's get going. For question number one, we have minimalist versus maximist. The simplest, most minimal deck that I have is the Wandering Moon Tarot. Now I bought this deck for this exact reason. I wanted a deck that would be simple, dimple, like I just want black and white, I want really simple symbology. I want something that's clear and uncomplicated. And this is what I got in this deck. So this deck, sometimes I'll use this deck at the end of the night when everything is winding down here at home. Everybody's going into their little corners and beds and <laughs> showering and settling down. But this deck is just full of space. It gives you space to think. Now, a lot of people think about the spacious tarot in that respect, but in that deck, you're stepping into it, like you're in the scene. In this deck, it's almost like you're observing. You're taking witness to the scene and just looking at the simple symbology and, and just taking it at that point where you're not really, you're involved, but you're not um, heavy into the scene. I don't know if that makes any sense. I think I said the same thing when I did the walkthrough of this deck. Like, I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but I just wanted something that was clean, that had simple symbology about the cards themselves, but I didn't want anything heavy. There are some days where I just need that kind of simplicity and this deck does it for me. So now on the polar opposite side of that, we have the Spirit Keepers Tarot. Now this is an absolutely stunning deck. Look at everything on the back. Now I'm gonna show you the back of this. See, very simple, very clean. Now this is clean, but it is not simple. I mean, look at all of that. It is just beautiful. And then the cards themselves, they each have so much symbology. Um, there's the I Ching, there are astrological symbols. In addition to that, as you can see, you have the um, Tree of Life here, and then you have all these symbols to really dig into and to work with. It is just beautiful. The, um, the titles have been changed as well. Here I go, dropping my cards again, my goodness. Um, See, like the tension for the two of orbs. It's just, it's a beautiful and stunning deck. And you can keep the study of this tarot or working with this tarot rather simple by just using the little guidebook that was provided with the deck. However, <laughs> you were given the option of ordering the book of maps. This is the book of maps. Do you see that? Do you see how big <laughs> this book is? It's freaking huge, man. I feel like Austin Powers here. But <laughs> seriously, look at this. There is so much information. There is so much to dig into. Like this is gonna take me a lifetime. I'm serious. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I thought one or two years for this deck. Uh-uh, no way. I don't, I can't do this in one or two years. This is a lifetime study for me. And it is just amazing to me that she came up with this deck and all of that knowledge. Oh my goodness. This is an amazing deck. It's beautiful, but it is one of those decks that is definitely, definitely to the max, like heavy and beautiful. And like I said, you can keep it light, but there, there's so much to dig into on that deck. So let's go ahead and move on to question number two. And question number two is daylight versus nighttime. 
So in this question, she's meaning like morning versus night. So I have the white sage tarot here. This is my cute little tarot in a tin and this deck is just filled with light. It is beautiful. It is airy. It is the morning in a beautiful little teacup. I'm serious. Like sit out on your patio. The shade is there. The sun is coming up. You're enjoying the tea. There's a gentle breeze. Like seriously, do you get the picture? This deck is so light. It's so breezy. It's so tender and so beautiful, just like the morning, just like when the sun comes up. That is this deck. It is just a gorgeous little deck. And sometimes I forget about it because it's just so tiny and it's just kind of tucked into this little niche and I love it. It's just beautiful. Okay. So nighttime, this is your heavy evening type deck. And this is the dark goddess tarot. This is based on nighttime. This is based on darkness. And just look at this. This is one of my favorite decks. It is just beautiful, just wonderful. I love all of the images here and the depth of the stories within the guidebook itself. I love her work. She has beautiful, beautiful work. And I love all the goddesses that are represented here, but definitely one of those deeper nighttime decks. Number three, the best shuffle versus the worst shuffle. Now I have said many times on this channel that I do not riffle shuffle. And that's just simply because I, I just don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the truth. I just don't know how to riffle shuffle. So for me, a deck with a good shuffle is something that I can easily overhand shuffle and something that really feels good in the hands, like really just is a treat for me to hold. So this is the Northern Animal Tarot. This is the first edition. And this is one of my faves, guys. I love this deck. It is so beautiful. It has this beautiful, soft, very movable. It's kind of flowy like vinyasa yoga. <laughs> it has this linen little stock. And seriously, when you shuffle this thing, for one, can you hear it? Oh my goodness. I love that. And I have heard I have heard or I have seen that um, this deck also, if you do riffle shuffle, that it is, look at, even I can do it, guys. Even I can do that with this deck. This is such a beautiful deck all the way around, but it is one of the easiest decks that I have to shuffle. Now, this deck, the Modern Witch Tarot, <laughs> guys, um, this is still technically in my uh, library or collection because I do like that it is a Rider Waite Smith deck. It's very simple with the images for everybody to understand. It is a very young deck and very colorful, but you know, I'm kind of torn on this deck because even though I like it, Sometimes I think I should just keep it as like a bath time deck, you know, kind of have it there on my little shelf in the bathroom because guys, it's thick. It doesn't really move. And remember, this is coming from a person who doesn't riffle shuffle. It doesn't move and it is shiny and slippery as all heck. Like I like the deck. I really do. But remember, I overhand shuffle. And usually, like these things just start, you see? You see that? And that's not because it had a special message for me and those cards just wanted to be seen. No, not at all. It's just too dang slippery. And I don't know if you can hear, but every time I shuffle this deck, <laughs> you can pretty much hear that I'm frustrated with the deck because it's just too darn slippery. And I do wish that they would consider doing another printing of that deck because I like it. I do like the deck, but 
it's too darn slippery and I can't handle it. And um, guys, it's just, it's just, you know, see like even right now, like I'm frustrated with it. So is it really worth it for me to keep it around when it clearly, clearly frustrates me? Number four, confronting versus non-confronting. Am I right? Am I right? Yep. There we go. All right. Here we go. <sighs> All right, guys. <laughs> Confronting. Um, this deck, the Triomphi de la Luna. I know a lot of you guys really like this deck. Guys, I've taken it out and I've looked at it and then I put it back away. And then I take it out and I look at it and I put it back away because I don't know what it is about this deck. I have the Deviant Moon and I love the Deviant Moon. I think it is a hilarious deck. But this one, there is something about this deck where I haven't even worked with it yet because <laughs> there's just something about this deck that I just, I can't even get to work with it. I can't. I don't know. I don't know. And you know what? This was kind of a FOMO thing on my part where he released it and said, uh, images to follow upon you buying the deck. And I was like, yeah, I want that deck. I like Deviant Moon. I'm going to go ahead and do it. But um, it's a little confronting to me, just the images themselves. And I'm not like, I'm not uptight, guys. I really am not. I'm pretty relaxed. But there's something about that deck that is really, really confronting to me. And that's without me even working with it. So I don't know. Um, now, the most beautiful, loving deck <laughs> is the comforting deck. Not, not confronting, but comforting deck, which is the self-love tarot. Now, I was very tempted to bring in the gentle tarot. But the gentle tarot... I, this is my number one deck, the gentle tarot. I love it, but it is like having my big sister here. Like she's going to tell me in a loving way, she's going to tell me when I'm screwing up. But if I want a deck, that's just going to be like, you need a hug, grab a cup of tea, do some yoga, burn some sage, have a bubble bath, just relax. It's okay. You're strong you're grounded, <laughs> you're beautiful. This is the deck that I pull. This is the one, the self-love tarot. I adore this deck for that reason. It is just beautiful and loving and it loves me no matter what. And it doesn't tell me that I did anything wrong because in its eyes, I never do anything wrong at all, <laughs> which I, I really need sometimes. I don't know about you guys, but I really need that sometimes. Okay. So now for our next prompt, prompt number five is every day versus every so often. Okay. As you can tell, this is in my little mini Peggy bag. And I keep this in my purse. And to be honest, sometimes when I'm doing some of these um, walkthroughs or VRs or whatever, I even forget that I have this deck and I don't know why I forget because it's in my purse and I'm constantly using this deck. And that is, and I don't even have the full size because I love, I love, love, love this little deck. And it is the everyday witch tarot. I am tempted because I understand that the guidebook is really good, but I have such a relationship with this deck that, um, I don't know. I don't know if it would ruin it for me or not because I really love, I ain't see, I'm going to have to come up really, really close guys. Um, because it's, it is tiny, but I like it because it's tiny. Like seriously, I bring this little deck out the other day. My husband and I went to a coffee shop and, uh Oh, there I go dropping my cards. Um, and I'm just able to just, it's so tiny that I just pull it out and I just start shuffling it and pulling a couple of cards for myself. <sighs> It is so cute. I really like this little deck. And this is one of those decks that's just like an everyday deck for me. I can always bring this deck out. It's very clear. And um, 
I like this deck. It's so cute. I love it. And I love that it's in my little Peggy bag. And I love that it goes with me everywhere. Um, I don't know. You know, sometimes I think, oh, I should get some more tiny decks. I do have a little tiny deck of the Gentle Tarot coming. And then I have the little um, uh, Sage, White Sage Tarot. So I think... I think maybe that's enough. And why did I put this away already? I'm not done. Oh my goodness. See? You see how I am? Okay. So the once in a while deck, the one that I pull out every so often, I love this deck. It's beautiful, but I don't really reach for it all that much. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why. It's stunning, guys. This is a beautiful deck, and we are talking about the Majestic Earth tarot look at these images i mean this deck is just so so beautiful all of the images the these are paintings and um it's just it's beautiful it's gorgeous but this is not one of those decks that i just pull out all the time i would never ever get rid of it Never, because it it is a stunning deck. It is beautiful. And as you can tell from my voice, like even me looking at these images kind of just calms me down. It's a gorgeous deck. And so I don't know. I don't know if it's the imagery or not, but it's not one of the decks that I am constantly pulled to get or to use. Number six. All right, little disclaimer, guys. Don't hate me. Do you remember the song, The Men All Pause, when you walk into the room? <laughs> and she goes on to say, don't slap me, because I'm not in the mood. Okay, guys, seriously, don't slap me, because I'm not in the mood. <laughs> All right, question number six. Overrated versus underrated. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I know this is going to break some hearts. And some people may even get angry <laughs> at me over this. Oh, all right. This deck, The Moon Child, it's, it's very pretty. And this is another one of those FOMO purchases where I didn't order it. I didn't order it. Everybody had it. Everybody loved it. Everybody raved about it. The moon child, the moon child, the moon child. I have tried. I really try. And it's not going anywhere. But um, I don't know. I think remembering that time and how everybody just loved, loved, loved it. It was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, <laughs> and then I ordered it. And I was like, oh. Why did I order this deck? <laughs> Why did I get this deck? Um, I don't know. For me, it is, it, I mean, it's a beautiful deck. Um, it is hard to shuffle. The cards are thick. But for me personally, it's, it's a little overrated. Don't get angry, guys. Don't get angry with me. I'm just, I'm just speaking my truth here. All right. This is the most, to me, the most underrated deck. And this is a Super Lunaris. I just, I say it's underrated because I don't see it out there mentioned a lot. And I just think that this is a beautiful and stunning and gorgeous deck. It is a Rider Waite Smith clone. It is updated. It has diversity in all sorts, in all ways. And the cardstock is beautiful. Mine has a beautiful little finish here at the end. There is a $40 version or something. I don't know if it's $40 or, or less even. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. But it's simple to read. The colors are beautiful, somewhat vibrant, um, but not over-the-top vibrant. It's, it's so relevant. Um, and this, oh my goodness, I just love this card. I really love this card. This is one of my like, this is one of my ride or die type decks where I can pull it and get a very clear reading from it. And just the images that 
they used in this deck is just so, so beautiful. Look at that. Look at her. Oh my goodness, guys. I don't know. I just don't think that this deck... Here we go. The High Priestess. Oh my goodness. I, oh, oh, okay. Anyhow, I don't think that this deck really gets the attention and the love that, that in my opinion, that it should be getting because... It is a beautiful read, beautiful cardstock. Um, there's two options to get it. So you can go with like the Lux version or you can go with the uh, more economical version. I just, this deck is beautiful and they have plenty of resources online. So you can use the little guidebook or you can go online. <sighs> I don't know, guys. You should check it out. It's beautiful. I love it. All right. Last one here, light work versus shadow work. Light work for me is always the Kai Tarot love. Um, Kai is uh, a Reiki practitioner. And to me, this deck is beautiful and it's Reiki and it's lovely and it's soft and it's, Oh, the energy from this deck is so healing, so loving. It's not um, the type of deck that um, is confrontational. It's not too soft. It's just everything about this deck is perfect. I just love it. I love the way that the images are drawn and just how beautiful it feels. It feels like light and not light work like in a... I don't know, I'm going to say like a woo-woo fashion. Um, just beautiful. I just, I love it. This deck is so beautiful. And maybe it's because I'm a Reiki master and my, and my practice with Reiki that makes me feel this way about this deck. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's my connection to Kai herself. I don't know. But this deck is beautiful. All right my shadow work deck. And this is another deck that I absolutely adore. And it is the El Goliath Tarot. This is a shamanic shadow work deck. And the images are deep and powerful and meaningful. And the guidebook, let me show you the guidebook for a moment, if you are unfamiliar with this deck. But this guidebook is no joke. Look at this. Look at that. You see that? Two pages. No, actually, it would be more equivalent to like three. This one would be like four pages worth on one card. This is a deep deck, and it really gets in to some deep work. If you have ever seen Goliath on his YouTube channel or listened to him, the guy's deep. He is very deep. He is very outspoken. And I do appreciate that about him. I, I, like, I like the way he speaks. I, I like the way he is um, not confrontational, but just upfront. I appreciate it. And this deck is just like that. I, I keep going through the guidebook because I'm always amazed with the guidebook when working with this deck. A lot of people are... Um, a little like this image, you know, they get a little like, oh, I don't like it. It's a bunny. He's getting stabbed, blah, blah, blah. Guys, when you encounter images like that, it's usually an indication to you that you need to do some work with that card unless you're really, really like revolted by them. Um, like, as I mentioned by um, the Triomphe de la Luna, where it's very confrontational for me, it's confrontational to me because... I don't know the images and I don't want to, I don't want to speak badly about anything, but it just, it just too much for me, I should say with that deck. But this one, you know, these are just, this is nature and the way that things truly happen and the way that it helps you look at your shadow is truly amazing. I really, really love this deck for shadow work. When it comes to my tarot decks, like really, this is it. That's it. Those are my seven. I hope that you enjoyed this. And um, please let me know, did I offend you? 
<laughs> was I too confrontational? Was I comforting? I'd like to know. Please give me your opinions. And then also, if you don't have a YouTube channel and you're not doing the VR, you know, I, I would love to hear which decks meet the mark for you on these levels as far as the questions are concerned. I'll put all the prompts uh, down below and let me know which ones work for you, which ones don't work for you. I'm always looking at tarot decks, <laughs> even though I shouldn't. And my husband's kind of like, where are you going to keep putting? You know what? He's very supportive. He doesn't really say that. He doesn't say like, hey, Annette you know, you're running out of shelf space. I noticed you got another couple decks. <laughs> he doesn't do that to me. Thank goodness, right? All right, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here and I wish you a day filled with love, joy, and happiness. From my heart to yours, I will see you later.